So to understand the most essential trig functions, let's go back to that circle with all the angles marked on it. Actually, let's go a step further and frame that circle. Make it so that it is centered on the origin and its radius is 1. For intuitive reasons, we can call this the unit circle. Each angle set up from that center with the initial side along the x-axis intersects the circle's circumference at one point that we can mark with a Cartesian pair. At 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, the x-coordinate is 0 and the y-coordinate is 1. At 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians, the x-coordinate is 1 half, and the y-coordinate is the square root of 3 over 2. At 30 degrees slash pi over 6 rad, the two are reversed. What we're doing is effectively setting up a bunch of right triangles in which the hypotenuse is always 1, and the lengths of the sides are determined by that angle at the origin. That relationship between the angle at the center and the dimensions of that point on the circumference define our first two trig functions. For a given angle, the sine of that angle is the y dimension on the unit circle, and the cosine of that angle is the corresponding x dimension. The cosine value is locked together with the sine value, but the two are sort of out of phase. There are times when they are both increasing, times when they are both decreasing, times when they are changing in different directions. The hidden relationship, using the first quadrant as a reference, is that the cosine value for a particular angle is the sine value for that angle subtracted from 90. Remember that two angles that add up to 90 are complementary? Cosine is short for complements sine. Sine and cosine are not a series of calculations that we perform given a certain angle. These are specific sets of predetermined values, again tied back to those right triangles. For a given angle on a unit circle, there is a set sine value and a set cosine value. Starting from 0 at 0 degrees, the sine value increases until at 90 or pi over 2, it crests out at 1 then decreases through to 270, or 3 pi over 2, until it bottoms out at negative 1, and starts to swing up again. Cosine follows the same pattern, again that quarter turn out of phase. That's what the Babylonians had on that one clay tablet. It's a reference table for what we would eventually call sine and cosine values. Modern tables showing these values still exist, and they are all pre-programmed into any basic scientific calculator. Tracking this behavior around the unit circle is pretty straightforward with a bit of consideration. Setting it up on a graph and executing transformations is something else entirely.